My name is Charles, and Alexis will be on the stage right here. So, um, and, and my name is Ops Engineer Maven Code. We do a lot of things around uh, MLOps, deploying application on Kubernetes, and we've been using Argo uh, a lot in the last uh, few months and years. So, uh, we're from Texas, so we do a lot of things around uh, provisioning scalable ML applications on cloud agnostic infrastructure. Uh, we basically help our customers operationalize and deploy their models at scale, and uh, we do a lot of things around data lake, uh, feature stores, and model management. Yes, yeah, so uh, the agenda for today, uh, what it takes to build an enterprise machine learning platform, implementing cloud agnostic ML workflows on K8s, uh, machine learning model data prep and feature engineering, event-driven ML model training, and with Argo workflow and events, and implementing model deployment and serving pipeline with uh, KSERV. So um, I'm going to take on the first few sections of the slide, what it takes to build a cloud agnostic ML infrastructure. So the goal of any production grade ML machine learning projects is to build a statistical model using a well-curated data set. And the main artifacts, like we all know, is the data, the model, and the code. So the data will keep changing. Your code will be changing, and um, you keep producing model ad output artifacts. So this, a typical ML workflow looks like this, where you're acquiring the data, you're doing data prep, you're doing feature engineering. Then you run through multiple iterations of your model training, then until you solve the model, and you still monitor the model for drift. So typically, a lot of ML projects start on cloud services like Google, AWS, Azure, or we have some customers that do on-prem as well. Um, but ML, like you said, is very difficult, even if you go with the managed service providers like on, on Google, on Amazon, or Azure. Uh, you go through the process of identifying the data you need, uh, connecting to the data source, uh, preparing the data, then uh, you go through multiple iterations of training the model until you have it. So there's a lot of moving parts to this that makes it really difficult. So, um, and uh, one thing that we've seen consulting in this space a lot is like, if you're trying to build an ML model, you want to make sure you can reproduce the entire pipeline, which is one thing we've been able to successfully do with DevOps process, where you have a process that you can reproduce. Uh, you have components that, you want to make sure that you have components that you can reuse. So if a data scientist or ML engineer is working on a particular component, you want to be able to like uh, share with other team members and things like that. Then the other thing is manageability, being able to manage all the output artifacts for audio trades and things like that, then automating the whole process so that uh, the process runs by itself and things like that. So um, to get started, a lot of companies use managed services on AWS, or you can do the same thing with Azure, or you can do the same thing with Google. They're all managed services that will get you up and going and things like that. But in reality, what you're doing whenever you're trying to build any ML pipeline is well, number one thing is like you always need to solve the data, you ingest it, you do data prep, you do feature engineering, and you can now decide to run on any of these major cloud platforms, uh, at least these three major ones, and uh, you now tra you train your model, you do model scoring to see if the model is good enough, and you do your inferencing. So in an enterprise, it gets a little bit more complex, especially with a lot of enterprise trying to go with a multi-cloud strategy. Uh, where you have some people working on Google, some people working on Azure or, uh, or, uh, or Amazon. So you're trying to basically, different teams work on different infrastructures and sometimes it's a lot more difficult to like uh, transfer the knowledge between teams, especially if a team is all baked into a particular cloud infrastructure provider. So um, one thing we've done is to basically identify the, uh, the two main uh, things that you do whenever you're trying to train a model. You have the storage part, where you basically uh, ingesting all this data, you're curating the data for your model training, and you have the compute part, which is where you have your uh, GPUs or CPUs running on the cloud and things like that. So uh, on the story part, we basically think about it as a feature store, where all the things you do uh, to get the uh, data ready for the ML engineer or the data scientist, we curate it, and you, we have everything in a feature store. And everything that has to do with your compute, uh, basically running your pipelines and your workflows, uh, we basically abstract it as a containerized application that runs on Kubernetes. So because of this, uh, we have a cloud agnostic 
uh, layer that can run on any of the cloud providers as long as we're running on Kubernetes. So I'm going to hand it over to Alex, who's going to talk about all this to the next slide. Yeah, so uh, in order to basically create these feature stores, we use Argo workflows to basically do the data transformation and fill the feature store with the data that's necessary to train the models. Um, but we want to do this in a cloud agnostic way such that uh, our customers don't need to worry about if they need to lift and shift from GCP to AWS, they're able to do so. Um, so we deploy with Argo and Argo CD um, to give them flexibility and to basically bring customers up to speed. Um, a lot of our customers are um, first time Kubernetes users and we like to be able to introduce them in a way that's going to be uh, good for the long run. Um, and we introduce uh, all the Argo tools, uh, workflows, events, CD, because um, it gives them basically a tool set that's going to last for the long run. Um, and it's very efficient. Um, so some of the ways that we did this, uh, we basically allow um, different teams uh, to use Argo workflows to do whatever they need. Um, some teams are working on feature extraction. Some teams are working on training. But they're all using the same common um, platform, which is Argo. And this has been very successful for us. Um, so in general, like we need a data lake, feature store, all that good stuff. And Argo has been basically our go-to for building these workflows. And we've been using uh, the DAGs for some of the more complicated um, pipelines that we build. And it's worked very well for us. Um, some customers are using Tensor TensorFlow, some are using other machine learning uh, frameworks, but it um, doesn't really matter as long as you can build an Argo workflow and they know how to build workflows, it works for them. Um, so again, we use Argo CD, workflows, events. Um, some of the ways that we use events are file drop um, and uh, like a cron-based time triggers are very common. Um, and um, yeah, Argo CD is definitely uh, how we've been selling um, Kubernetes to our customers. Um, so being cloud agnostic has been very important to us. We make sure to stay open source and just um, not lock our customers into any sort of um, hosted solution other than just using open source Argo CD. Um, and this has been a great solution for us and uh, with lots of help from the Argo community. Um, so yeah, so basically the, some of the steps that we use to do this, uh, we provision on the, uh, the cloud offering of their choice. Uh, we deploy the node pools. Uh, we use Argo CD application sets to define the, basically the base of the cluster and the serving and event uh, components of the cluster. And then we deploy it. Um, here's an example of how we use the application set. Uh, we kind of use it to define what's the base of a cluster for uh, this client. Um, in this particular use case, um, we have all the namespaces, the role bindings, uh, Argo CD managing itself, and uh, everything needed to have a machine learning platform. Um, and here's kind of what our Argo CD dashboard looks like um, after being deployed. We have three application sets in this example. Uh, we got the base, which gives all the necessary infrastructure to kind of deploy uh, custom resources such as KServe or Argo Events. Um, and this has worked very well for us. Um, and application set has been nice moving away from the app of apps um, pattern. Application set has been, um, you know, it's, it's a lot better. Um, so yeah, again, here's a look at like, uh, like how we use application set to uh, deploy the, all the namespaces needed. We keep our namespaces in one general um, application so that any, uh, any of the apps that need to reuse these namespaces are easily able to use them without needing to worry about the namespaces created or not. Um, here's a look at what um, the baseline um, Argo CD dashboard looks like. And yeah, I will hand it off to Charles now. Yeah, thanks, Alex. 
So basically, we use the Iago CD to provision all the things that we need in the cluster uh, to get a um, ML process started whenever we have a new project. So the next thing we do is the data preparation, uh, making sure we're curating the right data set for data scientists to get started uh, whenever they need to train a model and make it easy for them to do it in a very consistent and repeatable way. Uh, we want to have an agile and efficient process so that if I'm once I've prepared the data, I can share with multiple data scientists on the team. And if we need more features in that data set, we can always recreate it without uh, basically slowing down the existing uh, data scientists or ML engineers working on this. And at the end of the day, we want to be able to create a shareable feature set that you can basically authorize a user uh, a, a team to use so that they can use it to train their model and things like that. So, um, so a typical ML workflow for a data scientist looks like this. You just you get all your data from your Jupyter notebook and things like that, and you try to use it to train your model. But the, the challenge with that is like if you're trying to basically do everything at scale, it's not going to work because you're not going to easily transition from what you're doing on your local to a production environment. So. Uh, in that case, for, for what we do and how we go about it, we basically create kind of like a data lake where you can land all your raw data. And we have an uh, Argo uh, workflow pipeline that transforms the data into a feature store. So we have a feature store, we have a schema with all the feature vectors and all the attributes that you need to train your model. And uh, the Argo CD basically runs on a, on a, on a, on a Kubernetes infrastructure. And because we, tr we try to be cloud agnostic, uh, any solution we build, should be able to run on any of the major cloud providers. So from there, uh, the data scientists can now go in and start pulling all the data they need and start training their models. Uh, so, um, so just to zoom in on the data lake part, which is where we keep all the raw data. So every time we ingest data, we have new delta. So we need to keep ingesting the data. It could be streaming, it could be batch. And once we ingest the data, we trigger a workflow to basically convert it to uh, the feature store requirements. So um, it looks, um, for the batch work stream, it could be a data that we're landing on S3 bucket or, or Google storage or set. Uh, we have some customers that are on-prem, they're not in the cloud, so we basically use something like that. And for the streaming data, we have something like this. Then we have a pipeline that basically converts and transforms this into feature groups, and that feature groups can now be used to train the model in the offline mode, or you can have the online mode where we create a key value pair that maps to the uh, greater detail, to, that maps to greater details about the data set that you can now use whenever you're serving the model. So uh, basically, in all these places, we're leveraging the Argo workflow. So all the way uh, from landing the data, I think Alex talk, talked about it earlier, where we have an Argo event that whenever a file drops, we trigger a workflow. So, but we're not going to trigger for every file in a batch process. So we have a way of um, basically uh, having a trigger file that whenever that trigger file lands, we just trigger a batch of the files and we process it and we curate the feature stuff. So this way, uh, the data scientists can always have new data. They can always go back and retrain their model. And if we notice any model drift, we have a pipeline that goes back and retrain the model and basically checks what's going on. So uh, we're using Agro workflow in a lot of all these use cases. And these are some of the pipelines that we're working on. I think Alex has some more details on that. Yeah, so uh, we use batch workflows, streaming, feature store creation, and uh, online feature store and offline feature store, all using Argo workflows to kind of build out these um, components. Um, here's an example of how we uh, built a small data lake. Um, we basically did uh, you know, data ingestion, like once the message is fired off, um, we consume the message, we do schema validation on it, make sure the message looks like the correct shape, and then we write it to the data store. Um, uh, same example, but like in a streaming situation, we consume a message from Kafka, uh, we transform the message, uh, and then we write to a feature store. Um, and here's the feature store creation where we uh, read data, and uh, we transform it, create the key value pairs, and then write to Scylla. Um, the benefits of having a feature store, it makes it easier to migrate the workflows. We're not tied to any particular cloud provider. Um, and it's, in general, it's just it gives a, a common data lake for any machine learning um, engineer to come in and build a model on.
Um, Charles? Yeah, sure. So uh, to basically operationalize all these things, uh, we need to react to events. And the event could be things like code change whenever you come in your code to the Git repo, um, data change whenever there's a change in your data sets. Uh, you want to trigger a retraining if it's necessary. And if you notice that your model is drifting, uh, basically you want to retrain the pipeline. So uh, when we want to operationalize our workflow in production, we're basically leveraging Argo events. So Argo events is kind of like, like the listener for us to automatically trigger all these workflows. Uh, based on uh, code change, feature updates, or model drift, or uh, if we want to update our pipeline and things like that. Uh, we also trigger these events based on uh, Kubernetes resource deployment, basically ma uh, monitoring the state of uh, a resource, especially with case Kesav. Alex is going to talk about that in a little bit. So um, a typical workflow looks like this, where you have the data engineer or ML engineer working on a particular stuff, you check it in. If you're using Git, it triggers a Git action. And we build a container and we push it to the container registry. Then we have Argo CD checking to see if there's a new container that needs to be deployed. Uh, if you need to retra retrain the pipeline, then it basically retra retrains and deploys the models and creates a version tag for it. So once the model training is done, uh, we basically create another event. We have uh, a metrics table where we're basically storing all the metrics. It could, be if we're, it could be the accuracy or the precision of the model. And we save the model output of artifacts, the frozen model in the container registry. So uh, once the model drops in this container, in, in this, sorry, in this bucket, uh, we can trigger another workflow as well. But before we deploy the workflow, uh, the, the pipeline, uh, we want to check to see if the metrics, if there's any improvement in the model. So, the Argo event workflow process will check to see if there's any uh, significant improvement in the model that we trained and determine if we need to uh, redeploy or not. And the same thing with the feature store. Uh, every time we curate a new data set to the feature store, uh, we have a listener uh, that basically triggers an event, a workflow event for us to retrain the model and, and things like that. So uh, some of the sensor, Argo event sensors that we're building on that, that we've used are things like file drops in the bucket, uh, basically uh, the, if there's a file drop or any change in the bucket uh, due to it dropping, uh, adding new files or new data sets, uh, we can trigger a workflow based on that. Uh, we check uh, message queues uh, to see if there's any new message for streaming data. And for Kubernetes resources as well, uh, we're basically, we can basically trigger uh, a workflow if there's a new event uh, in the Kubernetes cluster, uh, basically sending a notification whenever we're training a model if the model fails or not, if the model training was successful or not. And uh, we use web books to like connect back to something like Slack so that um, someone geeky like Alex can retrain a model from a Slack message. So um, some of the workflows that we're currently working on, uh, we're working on is a feature stock, uh, the feature stock creation workflow, the model training status notification workflow, uh, the metrics and the model drop workflow and the model deployment workflow. So I think, Alex, you have an example you want to show? Yeah. Um, so here's an example of the bucket drop uh, where you drop, basically this uh, allows us to drop files into a cloud storage bucket after a certain number of files have been reached, uh, the threshold is met, and a um, Argo event is triggered uh, that basically spins up a workflow that will take all the files from the uh, input directory and move them over to the training um, location. Um, here's what that looks like. It makes sure that there's a, the correct number of files needed to move to train. And if not, uh, it'll, it'll wait till another event is fired to do the counting. Um, we have, this is one way to do it. And sometimes we use a file trigger. Uh, but this is just one of the more basic ways to get it done. Um, once the threshold is met, the, the train is, um, the training data set is created, and we archive it, we zip it up, uh, so that it can be used for a new model version. Uh, yeah, and so now, um, once the uh, training uh, zip is created, we need to, uh, you know, do training and uh, serve the new model if the model's accuracy and precision is meets the correct uh, score that we want to see. 
Um, we do this with an Argo workflow that basically looks at the feature store, sees if the metrics uh, value for the current model that got trained uh, meets our threshold. If it is, we use KServe to deploy uh, a new version. Uh, KServe uses uh, these inference services. Uh, you basically just point it to a location in S3 or a GCS bucket with a TensorFlow serving uh, type of, of uh, model. And um, we have this DAG that we created where we do the validation looking into the metrics store. If the uh, metrics meet our threshold, we'll deploy the new model and we'll send a notification on Slack saying that a new model is being deployed. Uh, for a little toy example, we did uh, we used the cars data set to um, basically uh, just run a KServe and um, deploy a model that can determine if um, the given car is of a certain type. Um, here's what the inference service looks like. We use Argo CD to ensure that we point everything to the right uh, location in GCS. Um, here's what the inference service kind of fans out to, and Argo CD gives you a nice view into that. Um, once that's done, uh, we check the status of the inference service. We see that it's available at our URL. Uh, we can check the metadata on the inference service. We see that it's ready to go. And then we fire off a sample request uh, with a shell script to um, confirm that we're able to predict accurately. Um, yeah, Charles. So, um, in conclusion, uh, leveraging Nago for our ML projects, uh, we've been able to improve our team delivery efficiency. So it's easy to ramp up new team members because um, everybody is working on the same environment. Once you bootstrap the resource with Argo CD on your local, if you're running Minikube or if you're running on the Kubernetes cluster in the cloud, you can get going. Uh, we have a blueprint and a template. So if we want to create a new workflow, we're not starting from the scratch. We're just uh, leveraging the existing template that we have. And um, let's talk, I mean, cloud is not cheap, so uh, with our setup, we're able to reduce the cost for our customers in terms of the amount of money they spend on cloud and, and things like that. So uh, that's it. Thanks, everyone, for coming. I have a question from the virtual audience. Um, what technology are you using for the feature store? Um, yeah, so for the feature store, uh, for the online feature store, we're using SilaDB, uh, which is uh, it, it's basically kind of like a Sandra at NoSQL, but it allows us to, the memory footprint is very low, so we can easily uh, use that. And for the, um, the offline feature store, um, we're basically, uh, we use story buckets, and in some cases, uh, we're using traditional databases. That's the only question I have from the virtual audience. Is there anybody else with a question? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm curious, uh, what, what do you guys um, use? What, what do you use uh, Argo CD for? Like, I, I didn't quite understand that part. How, how is that helpful when you're, when you're managing these workflows that you're running? Yeah, so, oh, you want to take that? Yeah, so we just use Argo CD to essentially uh, stand up the cluster for our customers. Um, a lot of them are first-time Kubernetes users, and we want to introduce them to Gates in a repetitive or repeatable manner. Um, and we feel like Ar Argo CD is a good way to kind of introduce them to Gates and keep, keep them uh, organized. And it enables us to uh, deploy like new inference services and different type of Argo events, uh, so we can create new sensors and have them deployed in a nice manner um, where you can visually see what's going on. Uh, it's nice to see the fan out uh, of when you create a sensor or uh, the, basically the pods that get spun up from that sensor. Yeah, and, and just to add to that, uh, it's easier for us to manage the deployment, uh, the manifest for uh, all the components that we're running. So every time there's a new release of, let's say, TensorFlow Operator or KSAP, we can manage the release through GitOps process. So uh, basically, I go see the ops uh, do that easily. So, any questions? All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah.